Welcome back treasures. Today I'm going to be transferring paper images to fabric using two different techniques. First I'm going to use this cling wrap. It's just your regular old cling wrap that you would use in your kitchen to cover your food items. In this case we're going to cover our little picture that is cut out from a magazine in this case. But you could use picture from you know anything newspaper um, whatever that you have a printed picture for you're going to make sure that you have the cling wrap on the bottom and on the top of your image and it's going to kind of laminate it together and adhere it to the fabric at the same time now i'm just trimming off some of the excess here but you'll see i did leave um, kind of a larger amount around. Now we're going to the iron and I'm using a piece of parchment paper on top before I iron because if you don't use parchment paper and you just iron it directly you're going to get melted cling wrap all over your iron and I promise you don't want that. Then I'm just gonna kind of peel this back and check it a little bit, and make sure that it is melted. Now I have my iron set on about a medium setting. I've seen some people say to use it on the highest setting, but it, my iron will just scorch it and really melt it into a bubble. And we want it not liquefied, just melted to where it adheres to itself. And so you can see around the edge where I didn't cut it close to the paper, you can see where that cling wrap melted. So let's see what it looks like when you cut the design really close to the paper. You want a little bit of a lip so that the front of the cling, cling wrap and the back of the cling wrap can touch each other and meld together when you iron it, but not a big lip. So in this case, I cut it very close to the image itself, but it did have just the slightest hairline amount that went past the image. So we'll peel this back and let's just kind of look at this. Yes, it is adhered and you don't have that big outline to this image. When it's a newspaper or a magazine, you can see kind of the back part of that. So I'm going to use a different technique for this image that's printed off of copy paper. Just a cute little fairy house here. I'm going to put it on a piece of parchment paper just so I don't get this Mod Podge everywhere. Now I am Mod Podging very liberally to this design. I'm gonna cover the whole entire design but try, try not to get it too far out of the actual image. So I want a good, good, good coverage of Mod Podge and then I'm going to just stick it straight down onto the fabric, make sure there's not any holes and let it dry for about mm, 24 hours. Then I'm gonna come back and cut off the excess paper. You could have cut the image out um, from the paper originally, but I like to have a little bit of excess on. Then you're going to wet the back of that paper, kind of like those temporary tattoos. And see, I like the excess paper because it gives me an area to grip and kind of gently pull the paper back, and then I can wet the paper again. Then you're going to rub it with your finger very gently, kind of in a back and forth circular motion that it will just barely rub the paper off, but will leave the image there. Now you do have to be pretty careful. Don't rub excessively hard. It's very gentle because you will see that I do rub a little bit of the image off on the roof of this little house. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you like crafting, especially paper crafting for your junk journals, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Be a treasure and it'll really help you stay connected and see all my future upcoming videos. You can see right here, I rubbed off a little bit of the image of the top of the house, but the way this transfer looks at the end, it kind of has a little bit of kind of old, worn, weathered look to it. 
So if you get a little bit of the image rubbed off, it doesn't hurt the overall look and finish of the image itself. So after you get that off, I kind of just brush it gently with a towel to make sure you don't have any paper bits still on it. And you don't want it to be excessively wet for the next step, but a little bit damp on the fabric is okay. You just don't want the image to be damp. Then I'm going to gently cover it with a very thin layer of Mod Podge. Now I used the matte finish Mod Podge on this, uh, but I actually would suggest using a gloss or you know, just one that has a little bit more sheen to it to do this step in the process. But it's up to you. You'll see how mine turned out with just the matte finish. Um, and then you can make the decision for yourself. After that dries completely, this is what it looks like. So see, it kind of has a little bit of a worn, weathered look to it. Then comparing that to our cling wrap images. So here's one where it's kind of a white background. You can really see the back of that magazine paper on it. So I don't love that. And you can really see the excess around the image. But here's the image that is actually colorful and I've cut it closer to the edge and it turned out pretty well. Until next time, treasures, keep crafting.